Hi, I'm Warren Geller. At Englewood Hospital and Medical Center, we believe that all citizens need to be informed about the health care issues that affect their lives. That's why we're proud to support the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Orthopedic surgery for baby boomers next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, Investors Bank, United Water, making the planet sustainable is the best job on earth, AmeriHealth Caritas, parent company of Perform Care, care is the heart of our work, Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation, and by the Ohlendorf Center. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Welcome to Caucus, New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. You know, baby boomers are still extremely active in sports, but all this is taking a toll on their, it says they're there, but it's our bodies, I'm um, included. Here to explore ways to prevent these injuries, as well as new medical advancements, we have Lauren Snowden, who is the clinical manager at the Kessler Institute for Rehabilitation. Dr. David Feldman is the director of hip surgery at Englewood Hospital and Medical Center. Jody Poskett has been with us before, back by popular demand. She is a certified fitness instructor. And finally, Walter Nolan underwent hip replacement surgery in 2010 and 2011, and also knee. I had a knee in between the two hips. You want to disclose anything else, Walter? <laughs> is that it for right now? No, no, that's it for now. Terrific. I want to thank you. By the way, also did some personal training for many, many years as well in your career. Um, doctor, here's the question. As we put information up throughout this program that is valuable, whether you're a baby boomer or not, uh, it's important information, and those who are not yet will be. And you said right before we got on the air, Doctor, part of the problem is that some of us in this category, baby I'm, boomers. I'm also a baby boomer. And define baby boomer before I ask you the loaded question. Well, um, they define baby boomers as those who are about 49, 50 years old up until about 60, 65, 60, 68. Okay, so here's the thing. Over here, you don't have to look at the camera right here. Because you could hurt yourself doing that. You could hurt your neck doing that. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for this? The question becomes, for those of us who are baby boomers, are we just not taking it slow enough? Are we just not hanging out enough and relaxing the way previous generations did? And are we confusing ourselves with people who are 15, 20 years younger and want to do more? Is that part of the issue? You know what? Today, I think there are so many different um, fitness methods and routines and, and sometimes you just take it a little too far and maybe our bodies aren't prepared for it. Give so, me for instance. For instance, not, I'm, I'm not bashing anything or trying to go against anything, but for instance, say CrossFit. It's a fantastic way to work your body if you're conditioned for that. But to start, say, in your mid to late 40s with something like a CrossFit, which is pretty intense with, uh, and not maybe having some modifications, you definitely have a chance of injury. And that person who wants to get healthier, who wants to work out more, mm -hmm. who is 45 to 52, instead of doing that, should do what? I believe you should take it at a slower pace. So introduce it to your body, uh, maybe low impact, uh, doing some cardio mixed with a low impact, um, lighter weights, maybe more repetitions. Um, for instance, I teach bar and Pilates, and I'm a huge fan because it is lower impact, and you can do that for the rest of your life. So you want to keep your body conditioned. And you can increase the intensity. You can increase and mm. in, or, or though add modifications if you need to. You can change it up. If your body's not ready for it that day, then modify it. What drives me uh, most crazy is when people push themselves and are not doing modifications. Is that part of it, Doctor? Well, I think that since we don't want to go gently into that good night, and we want to keep doing the things that we've done when we're younger, the response that many of us have is to keep pushing and to do the same things that we did when we were younger. And I think that's admirable. We all, you know, this generation doesn't want to sit back and watch other people doing things. We want to go out and we want to play baseball. We want to go jogging. We want to do all the things that we used to do. And 
I think it's important to listen to your body to an extent and to work with, for instance, personal trainers, important to do things that are not hurting you. Let's and be to more specific. Gradually, well, you know, for instance, when, when you go out jogging, yes. you really have to spend some time. It's an investment in your running to stretch out and to get your muscles warmed up so that when you're running, you don't start tearing things. Because you, says, I, I, just, I, got a, I just got a pair. I have this old pair of sneakers I've had for about 10 years, they say. I, you know, I want to go out there and run. Let me put those sneakers on. They may not have the right arches. They may not be running shoes. Oh, I play, used to play tennis in these shoes. I'm going to put those sneakers on. I'm going to go out on the street. And you know, that stretching thing, overrated. It's not just that they're wearing the wrong footwear and doing it's the timing of how the baby boomers are doing things as well. So you're still trying to work, take care of maybe your grandchildren, your children, and then say, oh, this weekend while I have some free time, now I'm going to go do that five-mile run, even though I haven't done anything this week, because they're trying to fit in with all the other things they're doing they're as well. they're competing in a race. Sure. So it's doing things at high intensity with with not balancing out the rest of their life and doing it, you know, that weekend warrior type syndrome where you're going all at it in those certain times of day and then not getting to it the rest of the time. And with shoes, we could go on about sho shoes, shoes matter. for a long time. Very important to have the Be proper footwear. I'm, at a minimum, if you're a runner, you're looking at different kinds of shoes, possibly every couple months, but certainly more of the, the average workout person who's just doing it for exercise and wellness, definitely at least once a year for shoes. Because? Because of the support of your foot, shoes wear down like everything else. So you're looking at wearing down rubber, those basic materials of shoes. They're not going to be supportive. They're going to put strain on joints where it shouldn't be. Yeah. And they put you at higher risk you for know, it's injury. It's interesting, this baby boomer issue in terms of age and adjustment. You're talking about the running and jogging, and you're talking about the cross training. Uh, my wife, Jennifer, uh, who never likes when I mention her on the air, so that's why I mention her on the air, <laughs> um, runs and cross trains, does a lot of things. She likes to run outside, and she runs on the treadmill. I used to, because there's a little bit of an age difference between us. Um, and I was like, nope, got a back problem, had a laminectomy. Tell folks what that is real quick. Uh, that's when you take bone off nerves that are being pinched in the back or discs that are pressing yeah, on Yeah, nice, nerves. remind me. So, uh, <laughs> it, it, right, so it's a laminectomy. You got knees, problems, hamstrings. So I said, you know what? No more running outside. Because every time you have the injury, you're out. So now it's this, stair stepper, right, elliptical, Right? Because no, no weight bearing? Everyone got that? Well, elliptical, I'm also a personal trainer. Elliptical is weight bearing, but it's not impact. It's, so and it's got so, weight because it's my weight. Of, that's kind of what you're looking for because that helps with the bone density for women who are trying to prevent osteoporosis. It helps for the athlete who wants to get, you know, work on themselves during the week, maybe can't get out on the tennis court. Get in my cardio. Can't go running, but it keeps that impact down on your knees and it's less uh, injurious. And add to that cycling, spin, I, I call it cycling, but it is officially spin class. Translation, is, is that what you mean by adjusting for age and being a baby boomer, but still getting a workout, but I want to de decrease the odds of injury? Is, am I on the ballpark here? Yeah. But I'd love to run. I just know what is going to happen yeah. if I do. Well, well I, I always ask patients, what is it that you want to do? Oh, no, I want it? to run but I just know how often you run hamstring, knee, back, out. Bad combination. Therefore, modification adjustment. Is that what we're talking but about? You don't have to modify away, I don't think, from the activity. You just have to modify maybe how frequently you do it. Really? Older athletes need more rest and recovery and a slightly less intensity, the acronym FIT, Frequency, Intensity, and Time. Well, what's your story? So, well, I was a full-blown competitive everything. That's why I ended up where I was. A competitive I was. everything. Uh, <laughs> competitive natural bodybuilder, drug-free in my 30s. I went on, then I switched from that because when I got to a certain level, state championship, I noticed that a lot of the guys weren't so natural. So I said, well, well, let me go back to martial arts. I then got my fourth degree black belt when I was 41 years old. Competing with guys, I trained under an Olympic gold medalist. I trained with two captains of the U.S. Taekwondo team. And we were going at it fighting full bore with these 20-somethings. Got it. And I thought I could keep up with them. So pop an Advil after a workout. Take an aspirin before a workout. Don't listen to the feedback my body was giving me and just wore my joints out, basically. So the two hips and a knee. And a knee. And now you're back now, on the mend. You know, part of what drove me to do it, being a personal trainer, you have to be up with your clients. As you know, you want to be up and moving around with them. I couldn't move around. I was sitting down. I was in pain. I didn't want to do exercises. I had per certain exercises for them because I had professional pride. I was like, okay, let me stop doing this. I went back, got a master's degree. 
But I was in so much pain. My body was literally measured in pain. My life was before I and went Dr. to Dr. Feldman. And Dr. Real quick, Feldman. the name of the surgery that you performed is? A, a direct anterior total hip replacement. A direct anterior total hip replacement. Explain what that is because I heard you were right back out pretty quickly. So go yeah. ahead. Um, with a direct anterior approach, you're actually not cutting a lot of the muscles that's done in other approaches. You're sort of sneaking in getting down to the hip and putting in your hip replacement. Minimally invasive? Uh, minimally invasive. The uh, hospital, Englewood Hospital, invested in a uh, table to enable this to be done. Is and that what we're looking at right there? Yes, the, uh, that's the, uh, that is the HANA table. It actually enables the surgeon to gently bring the femur up out of the wound so that you can do your surgery without cutting a lot of the ligaments and tendons. And rehab, therefore, is? Rehab seems to be much faster for this approach than the other approaches. And so for many who are trying to avoid, and by the way, you deal on the rehab side. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. It, how, how, what percentage of folks out there, baby boomers, make the real commitment to rehab that is necessary? You know, usually after surgery, and no matter what, if you're using whatever the approach is for hip surgery, there is a recovery period. Some people might move quickly and go straight home, and some will come to rehab. So usually when they go through the surgical process, they're usually needing some level of How rehab quickly after? and are committed to it. They're usually coming to a rehabilitation center within three days, Whoa. two to three days. Right. So they're moving through relatively quickly out of acute care, coming to rehab, and are committed when they're there, but the level of commitment, there are a variety of variables based on their pain tolerance. We are seeing that pain um, has been somewhat less reported with the anterior approach, although there are a lot of variables that can contribute to pain. Why is rehab so important? When you're looking at following any kind of surgery, whether you do it in this approach or another, you do get swelling, there is a period of time for healing, and you want to make sure you attack that early. So you're looking at managing the pain, getting the patient as mobile as possible, and also looking at education, because after hip surgery, mean? There are some movements that you're not supposed to do immediately following hip surgery for fear that you can move the joint out of place. Um, so it's really important to educate a patient. They might be in the habit of doing something like crossing their legs, for example. What I'm doing right now, this could be an issue. If you have a hip replacement? Usually the posterior approach definitely is one of the main precautions that you cannot cross your legs following hip surgery. Right? Yes. So in the end, um, and depending on your surgeon, your surgical approach, you might have these precautions in place for a period of wow. time where you can't cross your legs. Some people can't lean forward using the traditional approach, so you can't bend down to put your socks on. But with the anterior approach, you can't really do a big backwards motion like you're stepping in reverse. So being educated, becoming more aware is critical. Right, because you're looking to protect. You put that new joint in, you committed to it, and now you want to protect your investment. Talk about uh, the folks that you train. People come in to you. They're in that baby boomer category, and they say, help me. You say? Well, when I train them, or I do a lot of group fitness, and that's, you know, that's difficult because I may have a class of 25 people. What's the range? All different range of ages or range of motion. Both. Or both. Well, okay, so you, yeah. don't, you don't say, oh, this is a baby boomer group. So you could have someone 50 and someone 25. And I do, yeah. So you, oh, as an instructor, I have to offer modifications, and I'll always tell them at every class, you may have done my class yesterday, you may be doing it tomorrow, every day is different. Listen to your body. If you did a plank today, you know, yesterday for two minutes, today may only you be a minute. You just can't say plank on public television. Mm -hmm. Expect everyone to know what it is. Uh, a I'm plank a plankaholic, is, so here a, we go. A plankaholic <laughs> is a certain exercise plank. that 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 works. Your core, your core, big time. And go your ahead. core is not is not just your ab; it's your belly, your hip, your back, your center. Describe the okay. plank. Plank can be um, either wrist under shoulders, extending the arms, go ahead. and your shoulder to your heel would be in a diagonal. Or you can have it a little more difficult, they say, is elbows under shoulders. Like a push-up? Like a push-up, but, but you're parallel to the floor. Your abs are engaged, and you're basically parallel like a plank um, to the floor. Elbows under shoulders. Why is that such an important exercise? Because you're a plankaholic. It's your, core. it's your core, and your core is your center. Like an apple, like anything, your core, your spine. I had, like you, I had a very bad accident um, many years ago with spinal and back issues. And I... I, that was back in my 20s. I couldn't move. I had a lot of issues. And after having my children is when I, I felt the pain. I wasn't really working out as hard as, as I had been prior or after. And um, that's when I fell into Pilates and, and just gentle movement. Like you asked earlier, it was slow going. It's frustrating when you're used to being athletic and you want to get back out there and run miles or do the jumping jacks, but you have to listen to your body and take it very slowly and build up to it. And if you're not feeling it, it's okay. And you have to understand that. But um, by doing the planks and learning how to do planks and things 
of that nature, um, you're, you're balancing your body and it's your center. So you're strengthening your spine and, and things like that. And what I tell people, and, and if there's one thing I, I've learned, I tell them, you brush your teeth every day. I hope, okay, <laughs> twice a day maybe, hopefully. Why do you do that? You do it to prevent, uh, you know, it's for oral health. It's to prevent any problems with your teeth. Why then are you not maybe doing a plank every day, maybe two a day? A minute, that's all it takes. You know, as I, as I hear you talk about this, I, I realize that one of the other issues that came up in terms of prevention is stretching and all these, which is connected to Pilates and yes. other things you do. So many of us who work out on a regular basis do what I call cursory stretching. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean by that? Mm. Like cursory. I did about a minute before to say I did it, and then truthfully, this morning, got it ready for the studio. <laughs> right, it. Jumped in the mm -hmm. right before I jumped in the shower. That's right. I forgot to stretch. And it's as important. About 30 seconds mm -hmm. of what if the worst possible stretching you've ever seen. The problem with that is, as it relates to sports injuries, is. You're not doing what stretch is supposed to be doing. You really want to give it time. It's important. And your body has yep. to be warmed up. Right. Most, yeah. most but, people don't do a warm. Like you said, you did it right before you got in the shower. Or even before you get on an elliptical. It's not really that necessary before you get the on the elliptical. It's I got to get out of there. You gotta I got to get to the studio. Yeah, What's the yeah. problem with that attitude? Because it's just, it's, it's going to leave you tighter the next time you go. It's going to lead you to injury. And that, especially for the baby boomer, you are starting to get tighter. So you want to warm yourself up thoroughly then if you're going to do a ballistic exercise like ballistic, tennis okay, or right. something like that, you really want to then get a little bit of uh, active stretching, and then you finish with static stretching. Oh, my God. Jump so back in here, Doctor. What do you tell your patients? Oh, I tell my patients that they should look at stretching as something that is going to make them feel better, something that's necessary for the maintenance of their body. It's going to make them run better. It's going to make them play tennis better. It's going to prevent them from being injured when they're doing these types of ballistic and forceful exercises. It helps your golf game? It definitely helps your the golf game. Yeah. <laughs> the planks help your, <laughs> your core. Yeah, you your are a plank of I am. Um, the patients have to realize, too. too. Patients will come in and jump in and say, well, if I only have time to do this, this is where I want to focus. I want the cardio that you. day. Sure, this is, if I have 30 <laughs> minutes, it has to be, I'll burn the most calories with the running or I'll get yes. the most bang for my buck. And they have to start to realize you'll actually more efficiently use your muscles and set them up for better ability to be stronger, to have more endurance if you stretch. So they have to see it as part of the big picture of the investment. exercise and not a separate piece of the it's exercise. It's as important as your workout. Yeah. It is, the it, stretching it is, is as important as the workout? As Absolutely. we age, flexibility decreases, I'm sure, that, and you know your elasticity, and you need to keep it moving. And if, if nothing more, I always say the stretch is probably more important than the rest of your workout. Like the rubber, like, is it like, like a rubber, rubber band? band yes. Yeah. And like, you know, you, yeah. how are you going to feel? If you, what do you, when you're young, you don't feel stiff, right? Mm -hmm. When you're older, you start to feel stiff. Well, what can keep you from feeling stiff? Being flexible. Yep. Right, so it's part mm. of the way you feel. You know? Get yourself a foam roller. If you I got the foam roller. Foam I see roller it in the corner She'll tell all the you, time. it's your best friend. I got the foam roller, right? Great and I stretching. roll on the foam roller, I'm like, that hurts. <laughs> I'm going to put the foam roller back <laughs> in the corner. What should I be doing? It's not about what I'm doing. <clears throat> By the way, the foam roller, it's cost, it doesn't cost a lot. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the roll. Mm -hmm. You got it there. You roll it on your back. You're like, why is that helpful? Oh, if you think posture is one of the biggest challenges, is as people get older, their posture just tends to come forward. And we talked about core. It, your whole body works as a unit. So if the posture is good, you're setting yourself up for better sitting, better ability to do your work, to do your physical activities. And if the posture is good, it all kind of leads down the and chain. And that roller, so just be clear, sure. what you're doing is you're rolling back on it. And is, is it actually adjusting your vertebrae? You're, sometimes you'll get some adjustments, you will, but it's not just for your back. It's not? Your IT band, if you roll on your side, which hurts, it does hurt. Your calves, your the, the, glutes, the IT your band hamstring. is the, it, I can't even pronounce it. It's the, it's the thing that it hurts, home, it hurts hip, so much. Hip, it's illegal, it hurts down. so much. You take that foam roller, and everyone says you need to do that. You start rolling it over here on the side. Oh, get this, you Steve, stars. you get this? get this? You start rolling it on the side of your leg. It kills, but what's the value? Oh, well, look, if you want to go out and play basketball and jump and do a layup, if your muscles are tight and you come down on tight muscles, you're going to be ripping that. Mm -hmm. You want to have your muscles stretched out, smooth, gliding well, and that'll help. 
And the roller is like giving yourself a body massage that a lot of us don't find the time or can't afford. And it not only is it good to use to warm up your muscles um, prior to a workout, but it's really good after. And it's, mm -hmm. it's wow. getting loosening up the tissue and aiding the repair process. And I'm, I've been telling all of my um, classes and my clients that if there's one thing you're going to invest in this year, and it seems to be the buzzword, I think, um, over the past six months in any fitness or health related um, article that I've read is all about foam rolling. Foam and rolling. there are benefits, and it's really very helpful. Well, let me ask you, you do all these things. We stretch. Mm -hmm. We have the foam roller. We do the right things, warm up, warm down. But doctor, there are times with certain baby boomers who are very active where surgery is necessary and appropriate and the best protocol. How do they know? Well, I always ask the patient, do you love this activity? What do you, you know, you have to find out where the patient's coming from. If you have someone that loves playing tennis and loves playing basketball, it's really simple to say, well, it hurts when you play those activities, don't do it anymore. <laughs> but people, you know, the baby boomers want to keep playing basketball, they want to play tennis. And we understand that these joint replacements that we put in are going to wear out. But then there's the philosophy of, do you want to not do any of your exercises, to sit there, watch other people doing them, and then when you get older, then you can have your hip replacement. But by then, what is it for? It's just for pain relief. You're not active. And you say? I say for those patients where it's important, I say you can go back to playing your sports. After? After certain joint replacements. Knee and hip? Yep. The, you can go back after both. You have to understand that there's a certain life for these replacements. Right. And um, we're always working on new things to make them last longer. And the understanding when you're operating on younger people is that it may wear out but then you've enjoyed all those years of doing what you want to do, and then you can, if a part of it wears out, you replace that. Case by case basis. You have to do it that way. You, you can't just say, these are the conditions under which you should have surgery, because it depends upon the athlete, it depends upon the sport, it depends upon um, how important it is to them, it depends upon age and a whole variety of other factors, right? Oh, absolutely. Jump back in. You, want, you, you know, like one of the companies says, you want to get back your go. I was walking, I could barely walk around the block before I had the surgeries. I was, and when I did, I was in pain wow. doing it. Um, I would you know, ask somebody if they were in the kitchen to bring me something because I didn't want to get up because it was too painful. This weekend, I played tennis for over an hour and you with, said you're with 53. a couple of buddies. I'm 53 now, yeah. Okay, so. And I was 49 when I had the surgery. At 49, you're asking people to bring you stuff in the kitchen because you can't get it. If I now, dropped something on the floor, I didn't want to pick it up because it hurt so bad to bend down to pick things up. Now I get down on the, four on years, the floor. Years Paid later, my dog, work my dog, you know. Four years later, I'm what limitations in. do you have? Uh, I put limitations on myself because, yes, you can wear the joints out. So I'm not going to go back to doing the 12 miles I, r runs that I did when I was a kid, but I, wanna, I run enough so that I could go play tennis. I want to be able to play with my dog. I want to do some things with my son, play frisbee on the beach, things like that. So I modify it as much as I can because I know how aggressive I can be. I know everyone's experience is different, but I want to give uh, folks watching on public broadcasting some walk away, take away, if you will, um, tips and tools. Go. I think if we look, the one thing we didn't really touch on is we have the whole baby boomer group who are, are very athletic, and very sports oriented, and then there's a whole other group that gets arthritis just from being sedentary. So being the opposite, well, being obese, doing nothing you can get being an obese, injury? sedentary is a is a. <laughs> you're just sitting there all of a sudden. Now I can't move. So but I didn't do anything to get hurt. If you're overweight, if you're someone who's carrying around too much of your joints, you can have issues from that sense too, just your general arthritis with age. So it's really about making sure you are active and setting up a healthy lifestyle overall so that you do activity at moderate levels consistently. You vary the activity. Nutrition so before matter. you said nutrition matters tremendously. In the connection between preventing injury and Absolutely. Really? You're looking Absolutely. at good nutrition, you're looking at no smoking, positive weight looking at not you carry 20 30 extra pounds as a baby boomer are you increasing the odds that certain injuries will happen sure really you're off balance you're you know you're not centered properly you're distributing your weight differently you're bending like he said maybe differently yes yeah, sure other weight takeaway messages 
um, do your planks, get your foam roller, take care of yourself, um, you know, even if you need to modify, you, you definitely need to keep moving, and that is the key, and especially as we age, keep flexible. What does it mean to listen to your body? Listen to your body. So, like I said, if, if today is not the day for you to do jumping jacks and you feel it, it's hurting you, please stop. Please stop, bring it to a march, or if you're you know, doing some other exercise, change it up. But listen to your body and make sure that you're still moving. And if you have someone who's a trainer in your class to say, tough it out, come on, you say? Well, <laughs> I still say listen to your body. If your body is telling you that <clears throat> I'm in pain, right. the pain means to stop. That trainer is not experiencing what you're no. experiencing. No, I mean, there's you different are. levels of pain. I mean, if you're doing abs and it hurts because it hurts in your, your abs, that's, that's a different, different. That's a different pain, right? Right, but if you're feeling <laughs> yeah. it in your neck and back, Please stop immediately because then you're just you're setting yourself up for more injury and problems down the line that you know what then you're out for six months so is it worth it well listen i want to thank all of you you've done a great public service not only for baby boomers because a lot of us are you know trying to stay in the game and stay healthy but for everyone else who is not a baby boomer yet but will be one day um thank you all very much and um I have a feeling you're going to keep running and doing all sorts of the things. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, Investors Bank, United Water, AmeriHealth Caritas, parent company of Perform Care, Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by the Ohlendorf Center. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Hi, I'm Peter Rooney. In 2006, I lost my father to renal disease. He was on the waiting list for a new kidney, but did not receive one in time. Unfortunately, so many like my father have lost their lives while waiting for a life-saving organ. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and by informing people about this important decision because you can make a difference and save a life.